I'm going to move to the next um, study that we performed, which is uh, where we asked the question, can we leverage the electronic medical record to improve quality in clinical practice? One should recall that there are several regulatory quality reporting CMS approved measures. The first one is PQRS 102 and Aqua 9. PQRS 102 looks at the number of bone scans that have been performed for low risk prostate cancer. And it takes into account the type of treatment, was a bone scan done, but most importantly, it looks at the low risk category, which is defined as we know by a PSA less than 10, a Gleason score of six, or a clinical stage of T1C or T2A. And what's also important to recognize that in, in order to uh, achieve this data, to abstract the data from the EMR, most of it has to be done by a manual process, which is time consuming and is expensive. So PSAs in general are structured data because they're electronically communicated, but pathology reports and physical examination findings tend to be unstructured data, which requires a manual chart review. The Aqua 9 measure is conservative management um, adoption for low risk prostate cancer patients conservative management being active surveillance or watchful waiting. But what's common to both um, measures is the denominator low risk. And we asked the question, could we improve the active surveillance of prostate cancer for low risk disease? And we published the data in the Gold Journal back in 2015 and asked the question, how can we measure in order to manage, in order to improve? And what we found, if you look at this dashboard, which we provide our colleagues and we call it audited physician feedback, we in 2011 to 12, which would be the first column on the left-hand side. And again, we anonymized physicians during this uh, presentation. Um, we noted in the bottom row about a 32% overall adoption for our integrated group at Genesis um, for low risk prostate cancer. So adoption of active surveillance for low risk disease was only about 32%. With an educational effort, we moved the needle to about 39%, as you can see in the second column. But between the second and third column reflects when we started providing audited physician, audited physician feedback. And you can see when we started showing our colleagues how they performed and compared to each other, it increased to 58%, which was significantly um, uh, beneficial. And at the bottom, you can see the thresholds. We felt that anybody adopting less than 33% of their low risk patients with act, you know, active surveillance um, was considered poor adherence to the best practice, 34 to 66% suboptimal, and the desired optimal zone would be greater than 66% in green, and if we look at the next data point, which is a more recent publication, again in the Gold Journal, we updated our data and I bring your attention to the red line, which shows our data all the way back to 2011 and 12, when we were between 33 and 49 and ultimately 58%. But where we're currently in 2018 at 78%, so almost 80%, of our low risk patients are managed with active surveillance, conservative management. And that correlates well with some of the um, international studies by Dr. Stacy Loeb, who looked at the Swedish um, active surveillance adoption for low risk disease, which is about 80% as well. And I think that's where a lot of our academic colleagues feel the threshold should be 75 to 80% of low risk patients should be managed conservatively either with active surveillance or with watchful waiting. So in conclusion, quality reporting will increase in importance, uh, reflecting the accountability and the quality of care we physicians provide. Uh, we have demonstrated for the second time now that audited physician feedback improves adherence to quality measures. 
and quality performance according to the measures will be required in the future by APMs such as those within the MACRA um, uh, system. 